This is video 46 on a Home Assistant and Embedded Solution. If you already have Home Assistant, then this video could help you. If not, then you may want to build a Home Assistant system. In this video, we learn how to start using beautiful LVGL graphics from our ESP Home Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller controlled by Home Assistant. Please let us know in the comments about your home automation system. We welcome ideas and criticisms. For this effort, we assume you have Home Assistant running. We deployed the latest 2025-07 Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. We have a minimal implementation that includes the ESP Home device add-on. Our test rig is based on a Raspberry Pi Pico W USB board connected to an ILI9341 display. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. Our goal is to deploy a minimal configuration that displays a few LVGL widgets to verify the touchscreen. We will demonstrate a few ESP Home Cookbook LVGL examples, we'll present the test rig wiring, and we'll walk through a simple LVGL configuration. The YAML files are at the GitHub site that is mentioned in the description and endnotes for this video. By the way, YAML stands for Yet Another Markup Language, which is a syntax that provides a simple, readable, and user-friendly way to configure the microcontroller. Let's look at some examples. By the way, I found these examples in the ESP Home online user documentation. As you can see, the first example is already running. The screen consists of a single round meter display it's displaying the core temperature of the Pico W. All right, let's show another example. Here I am displaying an electric lock that requires a code to be entered. Let's try it. Notice when I enter the correct code, the light turns green. Pretty nice. Here I am displaying multiple buttons using a flex layout. The buttons use a special font instead of text. Preparing your Home Assistant system for LVGL graphics begins with the ESP Home add-ons. It's easy. You click on the Add-on Store button. and enter ESP Home you can then select the item which I have already done and add it to your system when you do it will appear in the add-ons page in the side panel a new menu item called ESP Home Builder appears We can add a microcontroller with display in three steps. First, we connect the display to the microcontroller using wires. Next, we add and define the device in the ESP Home Builder. Finally, we install the device from the builder. To do the wiring, we look at a pinout diagram of our device and choose the pins to wire. Generally, we can use almost any pin, but some pins have special functions. In the diagram, I highlighted the Serial Peripheral Interface Communication Pins, aka SPI. TFT displays like the ILI9341 prefer to communicate using the SPI protocol and several control pins. The SPI pins are often used in microcontroller projects and have common names as I show on, this, on the diagram. On this slide, we show the pins used in our test rig. The display and touchscreen pins can be different. The display 
also needs to wire the ground and 3.3 volt power pins. The display's backlight pin, called LED, we simply wired to a 3.3 volt power pin. Back on Home Assistant, select the ESP Home Builder menu item. Here we can add our microcontroller device. As you can see, I have already added an ESP32 device called Central and a Raspberry Pi Pico device called Pico W. As we are describing the setup of the Pico W in this video, let's click its edit button. The YAML script describes a specific microcontroller. We can add Home Assistant automations and attachments, and of course, define the pins for the display and touchscreen. Finally, we can include our LVGL statements. By the way, I replaced the keys and passwords with Home Assistant secret keywords. Let's walk through the configuration. The first thing we noticed is that I've defined the, the Wi-Fi settings. And I have my Wi-Fi uh, SSID and my Wi-Fi password stored in the secrets. You can either let the uh, device connect to the system and get assigned an IP address, or you can provide a static IP. Finally, we get to the pin settings that we talked about earlier. First, you see I've defined the SPI pins. Then I've defined the display pins for the ILI 9341 display. Notice I've set the rotation to 90. This gives us a landscape display. Finally, we define our touchscreen. Notice that I have the CSP pin, but I do not have the IRQ pin. And that's because I found on my system that uh, the device did not like talking to the IRQ pin for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Next, we have our transformation and calibration settings for the touchscreen. You may need to change these, and we'll come back to these in a, in a bit. Finally, we have our LVGL settings. Notice that I've set the buffer size to 10%. That's because on a Pico W, there's not much memory. But the LVGL can work with very small buffers. To deploy this, uh, we can get out of the editor. And there is the hamburger buttons off to the side, and you can click on those. And the first thing I do is click the validate statement. I let the system run through the validate. Okay, great. It shows that our configuration is valid. Now we can click on install. Notice you're given several opportunities to deploy your code either wirelessly or manually. I found manual to be the most reliable for the Pico W. So you would click on manual. When you do, you'll immediately notice step three is preparing the download. And what it's doing in the background, the compiling the code that we just created. Give it a couple minutes to do this. At last, it's compiled. You'll know that when the preparing message goes away and step three just says download the project. Now, click on this link. When you do, you, you're given two choices, the UFT factory format or the OTA format. I like to use the UFT factory format. So click that. You'll notice that it's trying to download it, but the first thing it does is it pauses by saying keep. Click on that keep word so that it allows it to download that file. 
you'll get a PicoW, which is the name of the device, dot .factory dot .uft. Take that file, hold the boot select button down on your Pico while it's disconnected, reconnect it while it's still holding that boot select button, and drag the file to the PicoW, just as it says in step two and step four. Uh, disconnect and reconnect the Pico. When you do, it'll be running your program. All right, let's take a look at it. Here I have our simple hello program. You can see it immediately displays hello world and puts a slider out set at 75%, which is how we configured it in the ESP home YAML file. If you recall, there was a transform and a calibration step. Our touch screen may be out of sync with our screen. You'll know that by taking your stylus and moving it around the screen. If it moves the slider back, if it moves the slider back and forth, then you're fine. But it could be that you move the stylus across a different dimension, say the height dimension, and then only then does the slider move. That means you've conf configured the transform wrongly and you need to change it to the swap XY to false or true, depending on the setting that you have. Put three widgets out on the screen, the hello world label exactly in the middle, the slider down at the bottom, and a switch. If you can click on the switch, and move the slider, then you've got the transform and calibration set correctly. The nice thing is, is while you're experimenting with your device, you can go to the log screen and it will display the logs of your touches. Right. If you need to make a change, then recompile and reinstall the software. Once you've got the display so it appears on the screen and you've got the slider and switch button um, so that you can touch them and they perform correctly, then you have the system configured. Now that you have the display and touch screen working, you can replace the widgets under the pages word in the script with the various examples from the online ESP Home cookbook examples, which is what I did in the demonstration earlier. Hopefully, seeing this example helps you configure your ESP Home device and start to use beautiful LVGL graphics. In summary, in this video, we demonstrated LVGL graphics. We presented the test rig wiring we walked through a simple Hello World configuration and tested the touch screen. The benefit is simple, flexible configuration and integration with Home Assistant automations. Please comment if you feel other changes are needed. I hope this video helps your Home Assistant ESP LVGL programming. Thank you for listening.